I just want to talk uh, quickly about, there's several mentions that you made and I appreciate about transit-oriented development and about a multimodal uh, approach and the interest of uh, the administration uh, to, to do that. I uh, appreciate the mention of the CCT and also the Purple Line, I think slightly different, but appreciate particularly the uh, mention of the, the CCT. I, I would hope that we also include as part of, uh, you know, just like the Purple Line runs alongside uh, parts of 495, Mark runs alongside uh, 270, and I, uh, we had a long conversation in, uh, recently at our Planning, Housing, and Economic Development Committee about uh, the dire uh, need for Mark service expansion. It is in totally insufficient service for what is required. I think there are a few things that would be as transformational from a transportation standpoint than a single trip ride from Montgomery County to Virginia uh, and and to DC for uh, commuters and so I would hope that as you think through this multimodal approach uh, through this uh, process particularly in the 270 uh, part of the project that mark service expansion be a key uh, component uh, of that just like you're thinking about the CCT and, and are considering additional investment in order to make the CCT a uh, possibility uh, so, Council Member, you've uh, you, you've raised the issue of uh, transit a couple of times now. Um, so, uh, what I would like to address is that um, that uh, there there are no transit services that can essentially carry their own weight. They they require subsidies and ongoing subsidies. Just as we see on the Purple Line, as an example is that there is a $149 million a year availability payment that's going to have to be made by the state to the upper, to the concessionaire. Uh, as we have gone through the, the NEPA process, there were a, a number of, of things that we were wanting to accomplish for the purpose and need of these improvements. Uh, one of those was that the project needed to pay for itself. As we said, we don't have those resources. Uh, that we don't have a, a transit option that pays for itself. Uh, next is that we need to address the need to move uh, goods and services. And again, that generally means that that's going to mean trucks. And we don't see boxcars on the back of transit, you know, of transit. Uh, I, uh, I think tra that's totally fair. Just two quick. Uh, observations. One is that we have a service-based economy. Most of our uh, economy is based on, uh, on people. And so our, our goods and services are largely moving people from where they are to, to, to where they work. And so, uh, you know, I think that that is a key uh, com component to it. And uh, to the point of subsidizing, which I totally agree with, it's one of the challenges of transit, but uh, we have to rethink this because we subsidize roads every day and have always subsidized roads uh, every day with taxpayer money. And so I think we need to, we, we subsidize all forms of transportation from the public perspective with taxpayer uh, monies. And I think we should, you know, you know, I appreciate it, but I think we need to think through it that way. Every time we pave a road, we're subsidizing uh, auto travel, which I don't think is necessarily a negative, but it's a reality uh, that we face. So I, I started with a thank you. I want to end uh, with a, a thank you and a final question. Uh, the thank you is, uh, I think it was on uh, February 10th, you were in Carter Rock Springs. The department uh, was, was pretty well represented in Carter Rock Springs for a very uh, uh, robust conversation uh, there as well. And I'm a big believer that uh, if government wants to do the big things, and this definitely uh, uh, could be considered uh, a big thing, we have to prove that we can do the small things related to this project. And one of the things, besides all of the comments that you've heard here about house taking and right of way and transit and uh, Lexus lanes and some of the other uh, issues that you heard here, you heard about uh, the uh, issue with the sound barrier uh, related to the elementary school. This was a promise that was made to the community that was not uh, fulfilled, uh, not necessarily your promise that was made, but a promise that was made uh, nonetheless by, uh, by the state. And I'm hoping if you could uh, talk through whether or not you're able to fulfill uh, that commitment and whether or not moving forward that those types of commitments of sound barriers to uh, protect the communities that are impacted, not just from the taking of their property, but the impact of having uh, fast moving cars closer uh, and carbon emitting uh, vehicles closer to where they live and uh, some protections for them. 
you, I mean, the, first, first, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, absolutely. Here. Thank you. Uh, the thank you was directed to you, Secretary. I guess the substantive question was directed towards the administrator, as perhaps it should have been originally. That, that's You're quite welcome. all right. <laughs> but uh, so uh, let me first reference uh, the specific instance at Carter Rock. So uh, I have to get some more details on the sound wall itself, but I know we're working with them. We're going to be out there this spring uh, to do some increased plantings uh, in some areas that there was some vegetation cleared. Uh, I've been coordinating with them over the last few weeks, and, and we're going to be out there. Uh, as soon as the, the weather breaks, we're, we're hopeful that the weather has broken. Um, uh, cautiously optimistic about the weather right now, but uh, I think we're going to be out there uh, relatively soon to to plant some of the areas. There was a little bit of a visual buffer when we were clearing some of our uh, invasive species, uh, so we're working with them on replanting that area. But I can certainly uh, follow up with the specific instance opposed to that noise wall. But in terms of the project itself, uh, the project will go through all of the required noise, air quality, stormwater analysis, and, and requirements that, that we would go through in any project. And are you willing to commit to the decibel levels being part of the environmental impact study as part of that? Yeah, we, we will work through our, our, our noise policy and process just like we do. And it's, uh, I, I don't have the decibel right here in front of me, but uh, certainly. Well, I appreciate it. Appreciate the follow-up. And uh, like I said, appreciate the uh, strong presence that the department had at that particular meeting and I hope as the council president and several of my colleagues have uh, mentioned that that you make a proactive effort to be as uh, proactive with those uh, community meetings and uh, opportunities for the community to comment as possible thanks